Hello and welcome to the I3 lecture series hosted by the Masters in Digital Photography program at the School of Visual Arts. We are thrilled to have photographer Kang Hee Kim as tonight's guest speaker. Originally from Korea and currently based in New York, Kang Hee studied painting and graduated with a BFA from Maryland Institute College of Art in 2014. At home in the fine art, editorial, and advertising worlds, Kang Hee is best known for her surrealist and escapist take on digital photography. Solo exhibitions include Dreamerscape, Wave Hill, New York, 2019, Dazzled, Rachel Comey Gallery, New York, 2016. Group exhibitions include Future Shock, Milan, 2019, Asama Photography Festival, Japan, 2019, Weather, D Museum, Seoul, 2018, Wish You Were Here, Space 1520, Los Angeles, 2017. Her work has been published widely in Juxtapose Magazine, So It Goes, Closing Ceremony, Gup Magazine, and Adidas Original Scene, among many others. Her clients include Adidas, American Express, Air France, Bloomberg Business Week, Nike, Time Magazine, and The New York Times. Please help me welcome Kang Hee Kim to our lecture series. Hi, um, thank you for inviting me to speak here at SVA and thank you all for coming out this evening. And um, one of the reasons I decided to become an artist is to be avoid public speaking, <laughs> but here I am <laughs> facing my fear. So. I've always been interested on, in art when I was little, but um, I had to suppress um, my dream of becoming an artist because of um, strictly st structured academic focused educational system in Korea. And, but um, I moved here at age 14 with my mom and my brother for to pursue better education. And after I moved to the States, I was able to be myself freely and um, without getting the same pressure that was put on um, every Korean student. And this was uh, one of paintings that I did in high school. And I'm showing you this because I think it's pretty relevant to what I'm making now looking back so and Edward Hopper um, had been the biggest influence on my work back then and this is his painting and he often painted um, isolated moments of um, configuration and saturated with suggestion of subconscious mind and um, his painting gave me some sort of um, comfort due to um, lack of sense of belonging. Um, because I went to high school in Long Island where the majority of people were um, incredibly wealthy Jewish people and it was like very um, hard envir environment for me to be adjusted in. And to fit in really. And luckily I was able to make friends through art and music and yeah. And now I'm thinking about his work again because um, exactly the half of my life uh, I lived in Korea and the rest here. And also I'm painter but using photography in like different ways. So I find myself always in this like gray area. So this is like another painting from high school that I think, I still think this painting captures um, the best absent essence of myself and it was really just honest painting. And um, I won a few awards from this painting and it was hung in a um, capital for a year. 
So I was originally wanted to be an in industrial designer and I happened to just make portfolio and I got into painting and also my older brother um, was already doing painting. So I sort of followed his um, footstep. And this was based on my experience um, at the Met with um, authoritative security guard. Um, and I went a little bit close to the Hopper painting, and I wasn't even that close, but he was yelling at me and being really rude. And I couldn't really speak English that well back then, so as a re revenge, um, I made this painting, <laughs> like dreaming of breaking all the rules in the museum and like being really free. I think that, yeah. <sighs> so, um, in high school, that was this was like the first assignment um, that I did, and I tried really hard to um, unlearn all the realistic style of painting because I had this sort of like weird um, obsession and perfectionism over small things, and once I wanted to achieve like the best handwriting and ended up ripping off like the whole notebook. And I wanted to get over that and wanted to um, experiment um, on um, doing different um, styles from abstraction to conceptualisms. But I'm just going to stick, I'm not going to show all the um, paintings because I, I don't feel like I was being myself. And in third year of college, um, I was feeling a little bit stuck and the iPhone cameras were getting really good and I just play around with the camera and then um, a brother um, suggested me to use Instagram and like I got into street photography and just was going around taking like lots of photos and I got featured on boom.com, which is Canadian art blog, and for having the best Instagram um, along with Tim Barber. And that sort of attract a lot of followers. And I continued doing that. I, was, I got curious about photography and started to take a few classes before graduating. And this is the thesis I did um, in college. And this was where I um, combined all my interests in different mediums, and like painting, photography, sculpture, and installation. So at the time, I wanted to um, like create this whole experience of optical illusion using um, just simple cliche checker prints and um, rather than just focusing in like each work um, I wanted to get beyond the frame and like have works to have this like whole um, experience so I was testing how far I could stretch them in um, different mediums and in terms of conceptual And um, so when I first got into photography, I was especially inspired by um, Wolfgang Tillman's work. And this was like when I decided to turn my attention to photography in serious ways. And I loved how he, his photos were very mundane yet um, poetic and he covered a um, really wide range of subject matters um, and the unconventional way of the installation was what I really wanted to do. Um, and I realized um, there are so many rules in photography that can be broken into and I was allowed to do that um, and I didn't want to be um, too precious with um, photography 
like in terms of techniques. So this was um, right after college. Um, I worked at Visco as a photographer slash artist, and I was I had to produce original content, and I was free to whatever. To free to do whatever I wanted and this was in 2014 um, and I was inspired by bathroom mirrors that like mirrored um, the opposite side of the bathroom and it would reflect um, a tree or something and it really struck me and started to carry around um, the square um, mirror everywhere I went. Just gonna show a few. I had a new uh, Photoshop back then, but this was the first time like trying it out. But also, um, I was I realized I was dealing with frames within frames again and I was just giving um, limits and after that I did a lot of um, still life photos um, using strobes um, in my apartment but um, the re like there are some reasons that I abandoned painting for a bit because it was really hard for me to be in a studio for so long. I didn't. I love working alone, but just being in one, uh, being in a studio and having this mindset of like, oh, I'm gonna go make art. But I, I wanted art to be integrated in like um, my daily activity, and also this one was also like I was carrying around mirrors, so that was sort of like still awkward and not natural for me. So, and finally, um, this is um, Street Aaron's series. Um, oh, it's gonna play itself because I have so many photos. Like, but, and I started this series in 2016, and it's a series of collage photographs that mix street scenes from New York and a few places I traveled um, to within um, throughout the country. And um, they start from mundane encounters on everyday errands in New York. And by manipulating these images, I am um, constructing my own form of surrealism. So uh, one day I was walking around my neighborhood and I was waiting for um, the right moment to um, photograph. But then I got pretty tired of waiting. So I was thinking, why should I wait? And why can't I just try making my own? And secondly, I was pretty frustrated with my visa status. So um, long story short, um, getting a green card um, should have been very simple. At the time, um, there was a need for more nurses in the States, and my mom was going to fill that gap. But um, my lawyer messed up by um, missing deadline by one day and that sort of like complicated the whole situation. And luckily I was able to be um, saved under DACA, which is um, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. But um, my status has made me leaving the country way too much of a risk. And Instead of um, grieving over um, the situation, um, I tried to make myself to think of it as a um, blessing in disguise. And 
I wanted to appre be appreciative of what I have. And if I think about it, I'm traveling in a way coming from South Korea. And thankfully, United States is such a um, big country and has 50 states that I can travel to. And the furthest I went was Hawaii. And that felt like I actually left the country for a little bit. And yeah, I got my license two months ago, so I'm ready to um, explore the Midwest. And yeah, I of course use Photoshop to make these images, but um, I feel like unedited photos themselves are distorted in, to begin with because um, in the world or like things have to be perceived in so many different angles and perspective to translate um, human vision. So I'm more interested in suggesting stories than um, its transparency or um, perfecting in the medium. Um, these images themselves are a little bit mysterious in a way because um, I took all these, uh, all the photos and I've been to all these places, but ultimately in the final form, I've never been there and I've never experienced myself. So they look really familiar yet um, totally foreign to me and it's like, when I want to travel, I look up um, Google images of um, countries that I want to go, but they, I can't like grasp on those experiences from looking at those photos because um, the context is mix missing. So I have that same feeling looking at my own images. So talking about um, subject matters, I'm interested in um, things that last a um, very short amount of time, like clouds, lights during golden hour, um, rainbows, and like sunrises and sunsets. They seem like sort of rewards I get every day. Um, for getting through each day. Um, there are like objects, like especially clouds, yet like intangi intangible and shapes and its form change um, consistently. And that's, I think that's why I really like um, taking photos of those and since they last such a short amount of time, I think that's what makes them really special. And, oh, it's coming up, but my favorite <laughs> cloud is this one. And it's called cumulonimbus clouds. And they appear when, um, right before like severe weather condition, um, like r rain and thunderstorms and it's really rare to see them, as especially in New York. Uh, yeah, uh, the unexpectedness um, in nature really fascinates and intrigues me and that's why, yeah, I love looking forward to like the next day to photograph them. And I feel like they sort of are reflecting how life works. And I look forward to seeing them, um, the best sunrises or like sunsets every day, but the scenic view of these don't come easily. And sometimes they even like skip a day, even if I want it like really bad. And it's clearly showing me like life cannot go always I want it, but it's okay because 
there is always tomorrow. And it ended, but um, the project has been very therapeutic for me, and it like feels like I'm traveling a little bit, and just feels very liberated. And as you can see, it was kind of um, the as I was doing the project, uh, I feel like the photos got a little bit more like calming. So now um, I'd like to talk about exhibitions and like commercial projects I did. Um, for this one, I worked with Area Wear and Rachel Comey um, celebrating Design Week. And um, I've worked with Area Wear um, producing puzzles with Mirror Series. And Area Wear commissioned me to do a show. Um, and they wanted me to do whatever I wanted. And I decided to make an installation piece and use household object drying rack as a frame for display. And I printed um, the earlier um, Street Aaron series. And I, I also wanted to point out the um, dark room photography by like hang drying the photos. And actually, there are. Um, small test strips um, hung that I was testing which um, fabrics that I was going to do. And yeah, I really wanted to activate the whole store and also put the shoes, um, actually hung the shoes and hung some photos in the back. And I could be able to um, customize their flags as well. So this was a fun project to be able to combine all the mediums that I was interested in. And this was at the museum. Um, I was really happy to sh have um, first museum show um, where I was from. And yeah, I couldn't be there myself. Uh, and it, the show was going up for four months. I mean, yeah, six months, I think. And all my friends and family were sending me photos. And one great thing about photo is that um, I don't actually, I can just send the files to the curatorial teams and they'll make sure that um, the pieces would be hung um, the way I wanted. And it was the show that I really cherish. And this was one of the first assignments I got um, from New York Times. Um, the article was about tangled electrical wires in Hanoi, Vietnam. And actually, I was in LA traveling with my friend. And I called um, Uber Pool to go somewhere. But then the driver ended up being a photographer. So he was doing, he was a part-time photographer and he asked me what I do. So I, I, I told him, oh, I just started out doing um, freelancing and I'm a photographer as well. And then this la older lady um, got in and she was an editor um, at time. <laughs> So it was really weird, but I mean, so we were talking about photo, and um, the driver was like, so young lady, what's your dream? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I have so many dreams, but um, OK, but I kind of want to um, shoot for New York Times before like my career ends. And I was just like, OK, that's good. And just like we were like talking. 
And then two days after, I got an email. <laughs> like two days after, I got an email from New York Times um, asking to shoot um, for the assignment. And what was perfect, um, LA had so many electrical wires. And I got so excited. And I ended up giving them two when they only needed one. But they ended up using both. And this is kind of recent one, but I'm just showing you um, a few of my favorite commission works. And this image was actually licensed to um, illustrate the op-eds of Guillermo del Toro and Bill Gates. And it was about it was on the art of opti op optimism, which like I really liked because my work was. My work is dealing with optimism, and I loved how Del Toro was saying being optimism is often um, perceived as uncool, but it's actually red, rather radical and daring and vital. And I completely agree with this. And the way people tend to want to appear intelligent is to be like skeptical and um, like be doubtful by default. And I think optimism comes after um, being aware of the situation and accepting the fear. And it's bold choices that we make to um, have better outcome. So this was commissioned from American Express. Um, um, so making, uh, working with American Express, it was surprising me. They gave me a lot of freedom to do whatever I wanted. And they just asked me to um, make the card stand out as much as possible, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of surprising how um, big companies can give you um, lots of freedom to do whatever you want. So uh, I sometimes just like having people license my photos because um, I don't really have to um, uh, be in like control, but because it gets stressful and they sometimes just, um, since I have really strong style, they um, ask me to art direct as well. And this was at Remoa pop-up <coughs> store in Beverly Hills. And they have licensed um, two of my photos in the back. And yeah, it was, Cool to see like um, how big the photos can be printed in wall size. And this one is one of my favorite. Um, I collaborated with Korean publisher um, called Minimza, and they um, emailed me because they were gonna publish Korean translated novels by Chim Chimamanda Adichie. And I can never forget um, the editor's email, how polite she was. And like she really firmly believed that my work and her works would be like the perfect match. And Adichie is an award-winning Nigerian feminist writer. And she's a feminist, but she's pretty like happy feminist. And she like unfolds <laughs> stories of Nigerian immigrants in the States and England. And the story takes place um, back and forth in Nigeria and America, which brings um, like kind of exotic and fascinating tones and it's just like a bit confusing in a good way. And her style and imagery created like very depicted beautiful depiction of Nigeria and making me think that I'm I can be I'm there like seeing all these scenes 
So, and also she creates like her own language, um, the Igbo language, which is Nigerian and English. And I think I was able to see the similarities. Um, I merged different scenes from like, from different places coming from a perspective um, of perspective of an immigrant. And these are two books I published with same paper um, in China. And same paper is independent publisher based in China. And they were fairly new um, they, when they approached me. And they were very flexible and willing to be experimental with making books. So, yeah, I had really fun um, working with them. And the first magic, I made 400 editions. And the second golden hour, I made um, 666 six, six, six editions, mm -hmm. hoping to break through that um, the idea of devil number <laughs> and this was like, probably the tough, toughest um, commissions I've ever done so there are Italian um, architecture magazine and I was asked to um, photograph interior um, interior of like typical American um, house but I didn't know what that meant, but I went to my friend's house and took a photo. And there was a dog, so I include a dog in it. And I took like a, lo a lot of them. And the editor ended up really liking the photo, but she was refusing to put it on the cover because they had a cat in the previous <laughs> um, <laughs> previous, um, what is it? Issue. issue. So I, I was convincing her. Oh, cat, cats and dogs are very different <laughs> <laughs> because often editors, yeah, can be very like controlling, and you know. So I wanted to be like a little bit rebellious, but she said no. And I ended up doing like oh, uh, two, um, two more of my um, living room. And they really liked it, but also like, I don't know, something was off for them. So they ended up um, licensing my f existing photos, and which is um, exterior photo. And And yeah, this was, um, I, I think, yeah, Photoville, I think you can see like the show there. And I was actually asked to apply for PDN 30 new and emerging photographers to watch. So, and yeah, I was honored to be listed. And I got, I often get like so many commissions from alcoholic like beverage um, <laughs> <laughs> company. And I'm, I I'm always like completely sober making these. <laughs> and this is great example of using cumulonimbus clouds. And yeah. <laughs> I think this is like one of my favorites. Um, because I don't have to put my, um, the actual um, bottle itself. And yeah, this one is exceptional. I can say that um, this could be easily like part of my work. And actually, one of my collectors asked me if I can, if he can buy this paint, I mean, photo. And this is like the same one with um, Golden Hour. <sighs> uh, lastly, I am participating in Asama International Photo Festival in Japan. 
and it's in Nagano, which is like an hour away from Tokyo, I think. Um, this is one of my favorite installations I did so far because it really integrated in nature and it can be also interactive so you can walk through um, the photos if you want it and it's open till November and if you happen to go there I have free tickets I can't go there so <laughs> I'll, I'll give up yeah thank you Hi, um, just a quick question. You seem to embrace the vertical. Um, do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Is that part of the way that you see? Yeah, well, it's not part of... Oh, do I have to repeat the question? No, no, please. No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I don't, it's not part of what I see, but I, I don't know. I'm so drawn to vertical format and I really want to break that through, but also like the horizontal landscape seems like to associate with like traditional photo for me. It's weird, but yeah. This time I want to just stick to that. Um, you mentioned that you started photographing with an iPhone that was getting better and convenient. Do you still photograph with an iPhone? Yeah, for personal use, I use iPhone photos, and I al also like if I see something um, that I want to catch later. So I use it as sort of sketchbook. But yeah, I never um, used it in my work. Oh, you never used it in your work. It was no. always um, a DSLR, I'm guessing. Yeah, DSLR. Okay. May I know? May I know how uh, how how long you compose a photo, like Photoshop or yeah? For example, with the the first one, how long you you do the uh, process to make the sky in the in in the pole? Oh, just one that part or the whole thing? Yeah, the, the whole whole, whole, uh, whole, it, whole, whole thing. it really varies, cause yeah. um, if I think about of an idea immediately it could take like five minutes but then if i can't figure something out and i don't like something about it so i will leave it sometimes like a day and i will come back to it and like it takes sometimes like three hours or like five depending is it photoshop and lightroom or uh, or other adobe uh, or how, how do you compose that oh project? oh just photoshop photoshop oh i see i see Okay, uh, so you are, uh, gear is a Nikon D8, uh, D810? Yeah, D810. D810, oh, okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just curious, um, when you take the photos, do you like picture what you're gonna make out of it or do you then take it and then play around with a bunch of photos of clouds and see what works? So I'm just wondering if you s sort of see it ahead of time or if you play around with it in Photoshop and then figure out what you're going to do? Yeah, oh, I don't try to plan anything ahead. And sometimes, I've been doing this for three years, so like recently I can't help myself to like think about it, but I try like not to because um, I like surprising myself in the process. And the more I'm surprised, the work gets better. So I don't want to have that like, um, idea and I want to be free without getting having any like ideas ahead of time do you still uh, look at painting uh, for inspiration or do you look more at photography these days uh, I go to um, galleries um, regularly and I don't know, I don't really, I love looking at painting, sculpture, and pa uh, photos. Um, I don't, I honestly think I look at paintings more. But, yeah. 
Um, it's quite off topic, but I noticed that your Instagram nickname is Tiny Cactus. Does that have any kind of meaning to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get this a lot. Um, I honestly wanted to use my name, but it was taken already. And I didn't really want to use underscores or anything else. And I was pretty obsessed with um, collecting tiny cacti. And yeah, it was just yeah, very, I didn't think about it, but I didn't know like that this was gonna be like this. <laughs> Um, I noticed that you have a lot of athletic clients, you know, uh, Nike, Adidas, et cetera. Do you have any examples of, of those commissions or can you talk about that process? Do you work with athletes or is it similar to what we've seen? Nike, Nike one is coming, um, on <laughs> coming out Ju um, in July 1st, 2020. And I signed NDA, okay. so I can't wait. <laughs> really and I have so many um, good things coming, but I can't really say the, these because I signed the NDA. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> Scratch that question. Yeah. <laughs> Edit it. <laughs> uh, do you also do motion for your clients or? for your personal work? Oh, uh, like I really want to. Um, I think that that's like the next step like I want to explore. Yeah. I think, it, yeah, I will eventually get there. But I'm so drawn to photography at this moment. So, yeah, but I'm sure. How would motion fit with the thing you're sho the things you're showing us. What would could you could you integrate motion into the motion into the kind of thing you do? Uh. I mean, your your images are in always sort of moving. They have a kind of uh, uh -huh. the clouds alone made a suggestion of that. Right. But uh, I'm just curious whether what you would do with motion pictures is. Um, but to incorporate the kinds of things that you're doing in stills, that's all. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't done motion. So, and I also kind of want to surprise myself. But I, I'm thinking um, it would be cool to do um, virtual reality with um, the photos that I made. So I need to like discuss it with engineers because I don't really know how that works. But that's an option also. But yeah, and I, I don't know which I'm going to. Um, your work is very cohesive. And I'm, I'm a graphic designer. And like I think a lot of my friends tell me that my work is very cohesive. It's all the same. And I kind of, while I'm working, I'm kind of like, oh, I want to, I should change it up. I want to, I want to make it more interesting. I want to grow. So how do you? kind of stay inspired, how do you, or how, how do you see yourself kind of growing, per se, like going from clouds, per se, to maybe, I don't know, incorporating more mountains, or, you know, something like that, so, yeah. How <laughs> I stay um, inspired. In, yeah. Yeah, that's always the thing I think about, um, so if I, like, I, well, at one point, I was I th I was thinking, oh, I'm too obsessed with clouds, and I need to be away with clouds, and and yeah, I, I just like walk around and like read books or just um, try to balance it out in life, and also like go to places that I haven't been. So traveling is like very um, the key inspiration for me, and. Yeah, all those things, but it's hard, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.